there is a particular issue which I've listened very carefully before I come out and speak, as I always do. I listen carefully to what people are saying. And everybody's, and, you know, this is the beauty of Jamaica is its democracy. And I followed carefully because, you know, all kinds of assumptions are being made and accusations are being made. And, you know, as, as a public official, you know, th these things are going to be said. But they are not true. And I am not the kind of public official to allow falsehood to stand in the public record. And that before we act as a government, we go through the steps and procedures, always knowing that any action that is taken as a public official is open to review. It is open to review by the public. It is open to review by the courts. And so we always try to be exceptionally careful. But what you will never hear about this prime minister is that he does not act. It is better to do something than do nothing. And that will be the defining hallmark of my leadership of this country. I did when others didn't. For 10 years, there have been applications regarding mining in a particular property. Mind you, this is private property. Um, the developers wanted to use the land for, for mining. There's a precedence on the land already. Between 2001 to, I believe, 2005, it might be later, there was mining permitted on the land. Why was that mining permitted? The mining was permitted to build the north-south highway. So there is a precedence. The owners of the land approached uh, NEPA for an environmental permit. I believe the land was somewhere in the region of 500 plus acres. I don't remember the exact number of acreage. But when the application was first made, it was considered. And the consideration was that a part of the land is undisturbed forest in good condition. And therefore, no mining could take place there. But there was another part of the land, about 100 plus acres, they say about 20% of the entire acreage, was disturbed. What do we mean by disturbed? It means that its natural state was altered by human use and habitation. As I said before, there was mining taking place there. But people went in and cut down the trees. So, you know, it happens all across the country. You have land. People not seeing the economic value of it. They leave it up. People need livelihood. And they turn to the land. But if you had management of the land, if you had owners who were able to realize their economic interest in the land with regulation such that they protect, promote, and preserve the environment, then you would have a greater protection of the environment. So yes, there is a piece of the land that is disturbed. And from 2010, the owners have been back and forth with the regulator as to whether or not it could be developed. They have gone through all the processes, all the consultations. They have done an environmental impact. They have done several. When the technical committee reviewed it, this is now the body of experts and subject specialists in the government. And I had an opportunity to just look at their deliberations, which was quite considered. They outlined what the environmental risks and threats were. And that was a basis on which 
the application could be denied. And they outlined as well what were the potential benefits and how we could mitigate the threats. And then they passed it to the authority that has the power to make a decision. Now, I am not going to go into what the authority and how they came to their decision. They went and they refused their application. And that's perfectly fine. The law provides for an appeal. And an appeal was made. It went through the process. The experts from uh, NEPA made their submission, which was, again, balanced submission, why it could be accepted, why it should not be accepted. How, if you are going to accept it, what are the mitigating factors? And uh, the basis on which it should not be accepted. The appeal was considered by then uh, Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Honorable Leslie Campbell, and he recommended to me that it should be the appeal should be upheld. I looked at it. It went through the process. And uh, after considering all, we decided to allow the appeal. Now, we did this considering all the issues. It was not a lightly taken decision. 71 conditions were placed on the application. 71. I, you know, most certainly, these conditions have significant costs to it. They have to put up a, a performance bond. They have to hire botanists and other technical experts to relocate any uh, species that is considered uh, in need of protection. They have to put in place a significant buffer zone to mitigate against noise, um, dust from wind, all kinds of conditions are in place. So I want to assure the public that the decision was not taken lightly. There is a picture in our newspapers of that beautiful bluff as you are driving along the North Coast Highway. The mining will not affect that. And indeed, the mining will be behind that. It will not be visible to the public driving, traversing that area. And it will be a significant buffer zone between the road and where the mining will take place. The mining will not take place all at once. They have put it in phases. So they have to mine a small area first. When that is finished, then they have to come back to get approval to go to another area. The development plan is not just on mining, and that was also very important. It is a wider development plan. So in effect, the people who are doing the mining, they have to pay for their supervision. They have to pay for restoration and any form of environmental protection and care that has to take place in that area. And it will be strictly regulated. 